Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of you have been following along with the project cars in my life. Uh, last winter, I had a Honda Civic and I had it for a few years, but I just got bored of it. For some reason, I've wanted a truck. I have no idea why. I kind of think it's because I was watching way too much Friday Night Lights and I wanted to be like Regan's. So, here it is. This is what I bought. This is my 1965 Ford F100. I went with a Ford because everybody has Chevy C10s and Dodge D100s are too hard to find. This is here to kill time until my wagon's ready and it's still being worked on and we'll have some update videos for you soon. So for now, I'd like to introduce you to Hoon Truck. <laughs> So what do we got going on under this gargantuan hood of my F100? Well, in 1965, the largest engine available was a 352. That's from the Ford FE series of V8s, which lasted basically forever. The seller claims that this truck has a 390. Those didn't appear to a few years later, but everybody with a 65 seems to think their truck has one. The only way we're gonna be able to tell is to actually measure the stroke length of this engine. And stroke length is a term that makes me giggle like an idiot when I'm not talking to the camera. That's because all the FE series engines say 352 on the block, but that was just the casing number. It could be a 360, it could be a 390. We actually have to get in there and measure the stroke length. So that's something we'll do because another thing we have to do is fix the valve seals. This thing blows oil like a spy truck out the left side of the truck. In fact, I've already had an, anon an anonymous letter from the California Air Resources Board to tell me that my truck was smoking. A kind California citizen reported it for me. Thankfully, since it's 65, they can go f themselves. One of the things we'll be fixing on this truck is this right front fender, which is suffered a nice little gash, but we've already got one ready to go thanks to our friends at LMC Truck. In fact, many of the parts you're gonna be seeing on this build will come from LMC Truck, and we'll get into that uh, in another video real soon. One of the first things we'll be replacing once we start diving into the engine bay is this glass fuel filter. Uh, the fun thing about these fuel filters is that when the engine bay gets really hot, which happens all the time in an old vehicle, this glass can explode, which means it sends fuel everywhere, which means you have a fire-roasted pickup truck. We're gonna change this one very soon. Thanks to our friend Mark at Scared Shift List, which is the shop where the Wombat is currently sitting, we have a new fan in here. The previous owner installed a fan and they installed it backwards. So when I hit heavy traffic on the highway, uh, it shot up to temp real quick and then stayed there. Uh, we almost had the radiator ho hose blow out, but we've swapped a new fan in there. It's, it's pulling air instead of pushing it away from the truck. It's working much better. Um, and then next up is to add a shroud and uh, take it from there. So there's no rear bumper right now, but we've already got a roll pan sitting back in the garage, uh, which will be going up here real soon, again from our friend's LMC truck. Inside the cabin is in pretty good shape. Uh, we're gonna have to replace that steering wheel. I'm gonna want a horn. Uh, the door skins need new trim. Uh, I'm gonna check what's under this seat when I get a chance. Uh, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. Oddly enough, this truck has something in common with the Porsche, which you should be able to tell from this shot right here. Uh, sound off in the comments, but you shouldn't need to because it's pretty damn self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing any Le Mans starts though anytime soon. The truck's already got some nice auxiliary gauges wired up and mounted. Uh, I'd probably like to clean up the wiring at some point, maybe swap in some nicer gauges, but for now, it's really low on the list. So this radio that's in here now will serve the purpose just fine. In fact, classic rock sounds pretty good coming out of it for some reason on some shitty speakers that are installed here. Um, but I'm already planning on swapping this thing out. No, I can't use a standard radio, which is fine uh, because there's no DIN opening behind it. Uh, instead, I found a radio that looks old school, but actually has more modern features, including Bluetooth and uh, some uh, iPod and auxiliary inputs located behind it. So I'm gonna swap that in and uh, get some better sound in here. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I like having good music while I'm driving and the Bluetooth connection is just an added bonus. Uh, well, also still looking old school cool. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that the previous owner installed a damn speaker in the glove box because I want to be able to put, you know, the, uh, the registration and the insurance in there. Uh, but instead I have this horribly hung speaker. So I'm gonna have to figure out a new place to put that crap. 
but we'll figure it out. On the floor here, we've got a four speed manual, which is nice so that if I'm on the highway, this thing's not screaming along. Uh, I pretty much never need first gear unless I have a steep hill in front of me. So I'm always taking off in second. I learned that to get it into third, you just kind of let it do its own thing. If you force it, you'll get a grinding noise. Uh, but other than that, it shifts better than I thought it would. Um, it's a nice old robust transmission and uh, I don't see any need to uh, change this up anytime soon. Additionally, the owner uh, installed a light down there, which is kind of neat uh, for nighttime driving situations. This is a little light right here. Um, haven't had to use it yet because I'm not driving the truck too often at night, but that's going to change uh, with something new we got up front. So we've got a slew of upgrades on the way for this truck. One of the first things we'll be doing, because I mentioned driving at night, is getting rid of these old 7-inch really crappy headlights. Uh, we've had an awesome little gift here from our friends at Peterson. These are seven inch round headlights that bolt right in, but they're LED. So the lighting output is better. The energy draw is lower. Uh, these things are gonna be fantastic. They're dot legal replacement headlights. Super easy installation for an idiot like me. Um, and that's part of the point of this truck is for me to learn how to do this stuff. Um, I can drive the cars, I can talk about them, but I've never been a very good wrench. Hopefully that changes here. Uh, if I do break stuff, you'll get to see that too. Uh, but along the way, you know, Hopefully I can encourage the people who aren't wrenching on their own cars to get out there and wrench on them. And then the people who do know how to wrench to help those of us idiots who don't know what they're doing. So we'll start with headlights that are easy. We'll move on to wheels and tires, which already got some sweet new Kragers coming. Ironically, that's an old Falcon tire sitting there. They're sending us some new tires, which will be great. Um, and then we'll move up to engine stuff. Uh, so we've got a good road ahead of us and uh, hope, hopefully you enjoy seeing what's in store for old Hoon Truck here.